My name is Joe Favaza. I live in 44 Middle Street in Gloucester. I'm 98 plus six months years old. Yeah, see, I'm all confused now. <laughs> uh, oh, all right, let's start this. I was born in Sicily, Terracini, Sicily. I was planted in Terracini, Sicily. And, and uh, oh my gosh. And so, Duncan, so, so you, were, you were planted in Sicily and then your parents came over to then, oh, the United then, States. Uh, three months later, my, my mother took me on a cruise across the Atlantic Ocean in her stomach. My family, we came and we, we went to New York. After New York, we went to Detroit. And then three months later, I was born in Detroit. Now, my name is on the, on my birth certificate is Giuseppe. And I don't know how, when I went to school, my name was Joe. <laughs> I never know how they changed it. Uh, I was born in Sicily. Uh, when did your family move to Gloucester? Must have been 1920. I was born 42320. Yeah, 1920. So you were still a baby when they yeah. moved. My mother's house was on the half on. Uh, 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 oh gosh, my mother's house. Well, so you guys lived down the fort, right? We, 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 when we first came from Detroit, I think we lived in the Vintimilla house, which is facing Pavilion Beach on the fort side. And then my mother, there was a house on on piles, half on the beach and half on the land. And uh, I, it was abandoned, and I used to play in it. And, uh, and I, there's one room was over the ocean, over the beach, had a hole in it. And I think that was the bathroom. Then my mother bought the house, and the Mayor Parsons was the the Mayor Parsons of Gloucester was the moved the house. His family had a moving moving. And so they oh loaded they loaded gosh. the house up on a on a sled and moved it from they moved it on the sled forward, by with a horse with a big horse. And the block and tackle, they moved it inches, and they moved it 100 feet to five foot square. Because I checked on it years ago, I went back down to City Hall, and I checked on the, the house movement, and the, the woman told me that the mayor did move my house, he got a permit to move my house. And so the house got moved to the five foot square to the, to the beach side of Fort Square, and then it stood there until uh, Clarence Birdseye bought it, right? Yeah, it stood there. Uh, Joe, Joe, Joe Bergarella, the carpenter, made a three-family house, three floors, and my mother rented the second and third floor, and that's how she paid the the mortgage. How many uh, how many kids were there in your house? We were uh, seven. My mother had and father had seven kids. We had t t two two boys, or one boy, one brother died. Three boys and five girls. So there was there was seven or eight children in that one floor, the first floor of that house. Yes, the girls lived all in one room, and I lived in me and the boys lived in another room. And my mother and father had the other room. It was really crowded. Oh my God. Yeah. And so then uh, Clarence Bird's eye purchased your house along with your father's house along with the rest of them. When uh, Clarence when uh, Clarence Bird's eye was making the freezer bigger, that's after uh, oh my mother passed away uh, quite a few years after that. So you were down there for a time. Bird's eye had his factory, and your houses were still there. Yeah, Bird's eye. Oh, it's, 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 and you used to get some samples, right? Uh, Bird's eye had a. The, the, oh my gosh! I, I'm, I'm out of words. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, why don't you talk uh, about um, talk about the frozen food? Oh, Bird's eye. Next to my house, Bird's Eye had a, this little dump that they used to pra 
they were just, uh, experimenting with frozen food. They used to come at four o'clock and dump all the frozen, frozen raspberry, uh, frozen, frozen spinach, frozen cauliflower, and they used to dump it there. One time they dumped frozen strawberries, and that was the first time I ate strawberries because my mother couldn't afford to buy strawberries. Was it just you, or was it you and some friends in the neighborhood? That no, were? just me, because we were the next door. At that house, and my yard was uh, with bird's eyes yard. So you... Um Grew up down the fort, so you probably spent a lot of time on Pavilion Beach as a Pavilion kid, right? Pavilion Beach. I can tell you a story. Pavilion Beach was full of, they used to be full of small herons, small fish of summertime. And I'd go home, I'd put on my bathing suit, get my wife, my wife, my mother's colander, and go and scoop up and scoop up all the fish of small little heron, about an inch and a half each. And my mother would fry them in eggs. And and what, and what you call it, it's, I loved it. And then um, you used to also go catch um, mackerel and sell it in the in the community, oh, that's, right? That's what Howard Blackburn. I one time I, my mother wouldn't give me money to go to the church at uh, church church to go to uh, to go to the show. So I went down the wharf. I got us a. A couple of mackerel I got it from fisherman gave me a couple of mackerel, and I'm walking by the Howard Blackburn Black uh, I don't know why what's the name of the the Black Howard Blackburn's building over on Main Street Bay Main Street the brass rail the brass, brass rail. rail and the man says you want to sell them fish and he says I says yeah he says go up in the back second floor the man will buy them. I went up on the second floor, tapped on the door, and a big man came out. And he says, uh, what do you have? I says, I got a couple of mackerel. You want to buy them? They're 10 cents each, two for 15. He looked at them. He says, put them in the sink. Then he put his hand in his pocket and closed his fist and pulled out some change. And with two nubs of fingers, he pushed two dimes to me and said, they're for you. I thanked him and went away. At the time, I didn't know who Howard Blackburn was, but I never forgot the man with no fingers. <laughs> now, so so From two dimes, so that was 20 cents. So back then, what were you able to get with 20 cents 20 in Gloucester? 20 cents, well, uh, coffee. Coffee was, uh, as I grew older, I went for coffee. Coffee was a nickel. Donuts were a nickel. How much would it cost to go to the movies? Do you remember? Ten cents for under twelve or something, eleven, twelve. I used to let somebody buy my tickets because I, I looked over twelve. But I went in; the the ticket girl was outside, and I said, "Sell the tickets." And I go in, and the man will take them. Now I became friends with the man to collect tickets because I used to bring him for some fish, and sometimes he used to let me in the theater for nothing. Which theater did you usually go to? The Strand, Mr. Murray, Mr. Murray of the, he was an ex-fisherman and he was retired and he used to clean the, the janitor at the Strand in the, in the morning and nighttime he would put on a uniform and collect tickets. And where was the Strand? It was uh, by Pulis, the Strand was by Palazzola's parking lot on Main Street. At that time, there was three theaters on Main Street, and the North Shore Theater is where the Liquor Locker is today, and the, the Union Hill Theater was uh, up on Union uh, Garden Pew's parking lot. And I saw my first talking picture with Al Jolson in 1928 in the North Shore Theater. And that's the one where the Liquor Locker is now. Where the Liquor Locker is now. It was your first talking movie. Yeah. Uh, the, the other big story is I was five and a half years old and I was playing down the beach, Pavilion Beach, and I heard a band playing on the boulevard. And I went because in those days, whenever there was a band playing, it was a parade. When there was a circus at the at the Stage Ford Park, they used to have a little parade, Main Street and the, 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 the boulevard. And the... And 
I, I I thought it was a circus parade. I went I went to the to the crowd and there was the band playing next to the thing. I was I saw this big thing like an Indian teepee canvas cover. It's covered, and uh, uh, I thought it was like an Indian teepee. And the band played. Everybody, the guy gave some speech, and everybody applauded. And they pulled the pulled the, the curtain, and there was a fisherman statue. Now I was five and a half years old, and I remember it. Mm. And because when I was 90 years old, I used to tell people I remembered the statue being unveiled, and they would look at me. But now I have a photograph. Of the somebody of an old photograph of the statue being unveiled, and there's a little kid in the corner. That my that that's me. I uh, because my because when my daughter saw the picture, she said it was her oldest brother. He said it was my father. <laughs> no, it was me. <laughs> it, was, it was her father. And uh, it was my oldest brother. My oldest brother looks just like me as a baby, mm. as a young thing. And right. I tell people, and when I tell people I, I was there, they, they dealt me. Now I have a photograph that that shows a little boy in the corner all alone amongst the crowd, and I'll swear it's me. And I'll argue with anybody that if they want to, uh, don't believe it, but I'll show it to them. So, do you remember um, some of the first fiestas? Were you around for the first I fiestas? I saw the first and the present all, all in a row. I never missed one, only because during the war we didn't have no fiestas. I remember this to be down the fort in front of Peter Favaz's store. The ladies would get about six, seven o'clock in the, in the summertime. They would get there and they would say the rosary. And I can remember that I was seven years old. I can remember the first one, and then as the, as the years go by, I remember, remember them. And I used to like the fiesta for a reason. A lot of times you would meet guy after so many years, after the war, you would meet guys that uh, that were, were friends of yours, but they're gone. They're all gone. They didn't. They used to come for the fiesta. Then they went moved to different cities, and they're all gone. But they used to come back for the fiesta. Yeah. Uh, I go... Uh, oh, I joined, I joined the Navy. During the war, I, I, I was in P-Town, Provincetown, fishing with the fishing boat. We were tied up. It was bad weather. And that's how we found out about Pearl Harbor. And two weeks later, when we were back to Gloucester, I joined the Navy because the Army wanted me. <laughs> and me, Chubby Castro, and Red Parisi joined the Navy. And my, my number was 705-2338, Red Parisi 705-2339, and Chubby Parisi was 705-2340. That's the Navy numbers. And me and Chubby, we went... To, uh, we went to, took a physical, then they says, go home, we'll call you. They send us a notice, and we went to Boston. I said, come, come to Boston and, and pick up a uniform and come in uniform the next day. The next day we came in, they shipped us to Newport, Rhode Island on the YNG-11, a Navy ship. We never went to boot camp. <laughs> we just went, we were seamen first, then we went to, uh, on the ship, we used to, uh, there was a, and then, oh my gosh, uh, it was, a, it was, we had a submarine net anchor, uh, across the entrance of Newport Harbor. Nobody could go in or out unless we know the net. There was another boat across the ways, the YNG2, and we used to signal to each other, then we used to drop the net to the floor, to the bottom of the, of, the, of the harbor there, and all the ships would go in and out, then we'd haul it up and close it up. Uh, so like I said, we spent almost four years together, me and Chevy, we spent, we, 
we went on the same ship. We never went to went to boot camp. Mm. And uh, when the war was over, oh, we got separated. Oh, that way. And I went on the Y, y, uh, y and G. Oh, why? I forget the name. That's what I get for being all age. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so, so you and Chubby spent a lot of time uh, in the Navy together, and then yeah, we were we were what you call it. We were in the same ship, and we had crossed the bunks each other. We had the same liberty, and we went ashore every other night, and we loved to go dancing. We all and all, and because Chubby looked like a little like Lou Costello, the movie star. And me, I would then look like nobody. But anyway, because they were, I was tall and thin, they used to call us Abbott and Costello. <laughs> but we used to, we had a good time going to dance, and whenever there was a dance, we would run. That's right. And so, that, so those were the only fiestas you missed while you were away. But they there was no they, fiesta. They had no right, so you didn't end up missing any of them. I, I can. I told you about my wife. All right. Uh, my wife, oh, well, I go to the Y now. I go six days a week now, and and I I get the back seat. The girls are all in front on ro on the ro treadmills, and I see the back of the girls. And one time a guy told me, he says, uh, "Why are you always looking at the girl?" I says, "I got permission to look at the girls." And he looked at me and says, "No permission. My wife gave me permission." I says, I'll tell you a little story. When I first got married, we used to go to Good Harbor Beach, me and my wife. And we were, water was real high, high tide. And, <coughs> and, the, and my mother, my, my wife says, look, Joe, look what's coming out of the water. And there was two girls in overstuffed bikinis. They were bulging all over. And you know? my wife says, yeah. She says, looky, looky, looking. You can look all you want, but don't touch. <laughs> she says, yeah, you can look all you want, don't touch. I'm, if you want to touch somebody, she says, you got to touch me. And how long have you been married? And, and so, so 70, fast forward 71 years of marriage with the same woman. She still says, looky, 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 like you got permission. But don't touch. <laughs> that's, that's good advice, I guess. Yeah, and so, oh, uh, with seven kids, and we have tw 19 grandchildren and 22 great-grandchildren. That's why the population of Gloucester went up. <laughs> so if we can go back to um, a few more of your childhood stories. So the, the one I always liked was about um, the float out off Cressy's Beach. You want to tell that one? The float on Cressy's Beach? Remember you went to go swimming out off of Cressy's Beach, you and your buddies when you were kids? You walked down from Pavilion out to Cressy's to go swimming and they had turned around? Oh, you mean uh, from the the Good Harbor Beach, uh, Cressy's Beach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's up the boulevard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what, well, we want to repeat it? Well, they didn't hear the story. I've heard the story, but... Oh. They, Oh, we walked all the way, the me and a couple of the kids, we walked all the way, all the way to, from the fort up to Kreskis Beach by the mother cupboard there. And because they had a float, we went there, we undressed, took on a shirt and took off, and uh, undre undressing was in my, my, my bathing suit. I was about to go in the water, and the coast guard, coast guard. The lifeguard came and says, you can't go in, why? I says, he says, you ain't got no top on. What do you mean you ain't got no top on? You're gonna have a top on. Th that was 1932. And in 1932, there was to be lifeguards at, at uh, Kresge's Beach. And all the men wore tops. There was no, no bare, bare chested. And uh, we, we walked all the way back down the fort and uh, and we went to the Pavilion Beach. No. Now, you also have some good stories about in the winter with the harbor oh, freezing Oh, the, the harbor. In the winter time, one winter, the harbor froze from a fort section right across to the bay. What's the name of the... 
The paint paint fire house. What the hell? The paint they? factory. The paint factory. The paint factory across the way. The, it was solid ice across that there was no fishing boat could go in or out. It was solid ice, and. After a while, the next day or two days later, the Coast Guard came with a big iron ship and it broke all the ice. And then the ships, the fishing boats that were trapped were able to get out and go fish again? That's how the boats went fishing again. Mm. Uh, I told you such men, how I met my wife. You didn't tell me in front yeah. of the camera. Why don't you tell me again? Oh, I didn't tell you in front of the camera? You, you told me out there. Oh. Um, Oh, you guys met uh, at a dance, uh, right? 1943, we come, well, me and Chubby would come home on a weekend, and we're in front of the St. Peter's Club, <laughs> and we heard the music. Now, we love to dance, me and Chubby, and we're good dancers. And we went upstairs, and we saw this girl, two girls dancing, young kids. One was 16 years old. I think she was 16. And the, the, they were dancing, good jitterbug. And, and uh, we looked at them. Then I saw the boys dancing with girls. Then after a while, we went away. And as I'm walking down there, not knowing that four years later, I would marry that girl. The good jitterbugger. That's right. I would marry her four years later. And in between, from the time I left them stairs, until the time I met her again was three years. And I never thought of her, don't remember her, or nothing, except that when we started going dancing again, I met her at a dance, and then I got acquainted, and then we got married in 1947. Uh, and that's why we had all the big family. And you guys kept dancing. You and you and Grandma used to do a lot of dancing, right? You used to go to dances on oh, the weekend. Oh, we used to go dance with, like I say, almost 50 years we danced. We used to go to uh, Beverly. We used to go whatever they, oh, the wedding. Oh. <laughs> I remember one time, me and Chubby, we went to a wedding, and then we were sitting close to the, the, the dance floor, and the band was playing, and they played the jitterbug. So we looked at each other and we said, shall we? And we said, yeah. We went on the floor and started dancing, jitterbugging. All at once the guy come and says, no, you can't dance. He says, the bride and groom have to have their first dance. <laughs> it was you and Chubby out on the floor? <laughs> we were on the floor. <laughs> we couldn't resist the music. We loved to dance. Oh, that's funny. So um, obviously part of this interview is about the 400th anniversary of the city of Gloucester. And you've been in the city of Gloucester for almost a quarter of that. Mm -hmm. And so you've seen a lot of things um, change from the time you were a small child until now. What's yeah. some of the, the changes you've seen Gloucester make and what's some of the things that have stayed the same? Well, I'm still saying I'm down the fort. I live down the fort. The fort was our, well, first there was all Nova Scotians, then the Italians moved them out because there was the wharf there, they could tie the boats, and at one time it was all Italian. I may be today the oldest Italian that was brought up, and I wasn't born in the fort, but I was brought up in the fort. I think mm -hmm. I'm the oldest Italian today that's alive that was brought up in the fort. Down the fort. I told you Duncan Street, Rogers Street only went as far as Duncan Donuts and turned left and turned right. Oh, that's where it was still the harbor. Yeah. St. Peter's Park also, right? You St. Peter's Park, from the, the from the landing to across to the wharf, was all water. There used to be pilings, pilings, trees that they used to make mast of the ships. They were called the spy yard. They used to take a big tree out of the water and they would smoothen it out, then put it on a fishing vessel or whatever sailboat. And so uh, you went to the you went to the Gloucester schools, right? Oh, I went to Gloucester school. I went to I couldn't understand why I lived down the fort, and I w went by the Fob school, and I went to the Hovey school now. My mother didn't take me to school, and 
the, I remember the girl's name, Mione, and later she married a scholar. That's all I can tell you. She was, she was 15 or 16 years old. She took me to school, to the first grade, to the Harvey School. Now, I can remember the first grade teacher was Mrs. Steele. The second grade teacher was Mrs. Buckley. My third grade teacher was Mrs. Weber. She lived on, on Middle Street. And the fourth one was uh, Mrs. Marshall. She was a young teacher. I liked her. Right. You had a little <laughs> crush on that one. Yeah. And that, so you went to the Hovey School? I went to the Hovey School. And then what was the next school you went? How many, what, what years I were went you at the school, Hovey? I went to Hovey School five, six, seven, and eight. Then I went, oh, then I went to what you call a Collins School, six, seven, and eight. I'm sorry. I went to Hubby School, fifth, sixth, and seventh. One, one sec, uh, first through fifth at Hubby? One, two, three, four, five, and then? No, one, two, three, four. And then fifth four, through the Collins? Fifth, six, six, yeah, Collins, six, where, seven, and eight. Six, seven, and eight, Collins School. Where was Collins School? Collins is where the, what's the name of that? Um, uh, the, the, the nursing, the retirement home? Retirement home, McPherson, yeah. maybe? On top of the hill. Like, uh, up on Prospect? Yeah, Prospect Street. Okay, all right, so that's where... So you went up... Oh, School Street. You used to go up School Street to get to the Collins. School Street okay. and took a right. There was a school there. That was the Collins School. Now, I went to a sophomore... I went to... Collins School. I went to high school. I went... Two years, I was going to my third year. Now, that summer when I was 16 years old, I worked at the Bird's Eye, in the Bird's Eye, Producers Fish Company. There was a fish company on the wharf working there at, at 35 cents an hour. And I used to work in the summertime and uh, I'd make three or four dollars a day. And then I, whatever work I got, I'd take it home. I took my money always home, and I would take a little and give the one to my mother because we were poor. We were poor. And... <laughs> that was the summer before your third year of high school. I was going to go... Oh, my third year of high school... <laughs> I'm going to be... Such, <laughs> I put my clothes out. I woke up in the morning. My clothes were gone. My mother says, go to work. So the next year, the next day, I put them out again, and they were gone. So I said, the heck of it. I went back to work and never went to school again. I was 16 years old, so I could quit. And my mother appreciated the money. That's right. And you were, um, your high school was at Central Grammar, right? They didn't have Gloucester High School at the time, right? No, I, when, when Gloucester High School was a city dump. I remember when city dump. I remember when the football field was always dumped. A lot of times there'd be little fires, and I remember the water used to come up. To the, it was because the football field was lower than the, than the, the river, and the water used to come up. And oh, the, no, so we're good. Keep going. Uh, water used to come up and put out the fires, and they was they were building. I don't know if they were. I think they were building the high school at that time. Okay. So I never got to, I went to high school, was the Central Grammar House, uh, Central Grammar across from the Central City Hall. That was the, the, what you call a high school that I went, but now it's the Central Grammar building piece. Yeah, yeah, your uh, sister-in-law, my Aunt Marie lives there now. Yeah. yeah. And so what else, you, so you were around when, um, Used to you saw Five Pound Island? You were oh yeah, the, uh, what you call it? The fish pier was an island. It was called the Five Pound Island because the other one on the harbor is the Ten Pound Island. That was a Five Pound Island. Then they built it. I don't know, thirty something. They built it. They made built the fish pier. Penny candy, the Bay Brute. Oh, I used to love. Did I say Bay Brute candy? Yeah. Bay Brute used to be a nice candy bar. A, a, a quarter, almost a quarter pound for a nickel. My father used to love it. Whenever he made a good trip, he'd give me a quarter. He says, go buy five of them. And we all used to have 
a Babe Ruth candy bar. A lot of times. A lot of times the guy used to come around the fort that uh, the, the bakery, the bakery got on the truck and then the steak around four or five o'clock, stuff that he didn't sell a town. He would come around the fort and sell it cheap down the fort and get rid of it. And there used to be the 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 butcher start, the butcher man, uh, uh, Balzarini's butcher. He used to come and he used to bring all the stuff that the people uptown wouldn't eat. He used to bring pig's feet, stomach of the pigs, uh, or, uh, what the hell, uh, anything. Uh, he used to bring the cow's udders. The cow's udders, my mother used to make nice soup out of them. <laughs> and a lot of things that they couldn't sell, they used to bring them down the fort, make a turn around the fort, and just sell a lot of the stuff. So, so we're, it looks like we're out of time. So the, I said Park, St. Peter's parking lot was all water. It was a spy yard. Yeah. Feldman's Bakery. I remember Feldman's Bakery. There was a bakery, a Jewish bakery. They used to make the lemon squares. They used to make a big pan of lemon squares, then cut the edges off. And his, his wife had a little store, and she used to sell the edges of the lemon square. It'd be a square. It'd be like uh, three feet by three feet. And he cut the edges off because he said it wasn't flat. And it was to go buy a, buy a penny candy. And so they used to sell us the pennies. Where was minutes. Feldman's Bakery? Well, uh, on the, on, uh, where the St. Peter's Park is. Okay. okay. It was there. Now, you, you also told me once about a bakery that used to, you could bring your, you could make your own oh. dough and bring it there. And they would. Oh, my mother, my wife, my mother. In the summertime, my mother always made her own paste, uh, baked bread. And the summertime was too hot because we had a coal stove. And we used to bring, the, my mother used to make a big oversized bread and bring it to Bertolino's. And they used to bake it. Where was Bertolino's? Bertolino's was across from uh, the St. Peter's Park. Okay. And, and then I used to go, uh, he, he would say, come back in an hour, two hours, and I'd go, and I used to bring it, and and bring it home. I had a cot, and, uh, listen, oh. well, listen, we filled up the whole half hour, so I think we're okay. Is there anything else that you want to? Yes, uh, I'm from looking. <laughs> Remember Fishman Roger Street was far as the Dunkin' Donuts. I mentioned Dunkin' Donuts. Turn left to Howard Blackburn. Penny Candy was a candy. Frozen Harbor, the paint factory, older person, Farmer's Bakery, full of schools, St. Peter's Park a lot. Born in Sicily, my mother's house, Fishman statue. Yeah, I think we got it. Fisherman statue. What else did I have? Bird to frame. How about thing? Wife's permission. Oh, oh, it's wife's permission. Yes, I go to the Y six days a week. I just mentioned that. Yeah. I go to Pavilion Beach. Three movies. I saw the first talking picture. Joined the Navy. Yeah, I think Pearl we got Harbor. it. I've seen them all. I remember my first great teachers. I guess it's all. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think we went through the list. That was pretty good for a half an hour's work. I can think. Yeah. Fucking Lord. I guess it's mentioned everything that I remembered. Well, that's good. I'll have to invite you up on stage at the, the 400th anniversary. You can tell these stories in person. 400th anniversary. <laughs> It'll be 103. No big deal. <laughs> I remember reading something in the paper that we were going to do something about it. Do you remember the 375th anniversary or the 350th or any of those? Did the city ever do anything big for remember any of those celebrations? The 350? i tell you something I remember. Right. I remember when they started, the, the St. Peter's Club does, uh, does races, huh? The, the St. Peter's Club, the, the Fiesta does a race. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember the first race that they did around the fort. Jackie Lucido, he played football for the high school. He was a Jew, uh, whatever it was, it was in high school. I remember he made, he ran around the fort 
they run around the fort, and they what you call uh, and he won the first race. But well, speaking of that, I remember they had this place in front of Peter Fowler's store. They had a uh, during the fiesta. They somebody brought a so somebody brought a little piglet, a pig, a little pig of grease, and, and they put grease all over it. <laughs> and whoever caught it could keep it. Oh my goodness! And they they had them in a circle, or something like that. And I know people, or some guys run all over, and they, 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 what you call it, thing. And they, they caught it. Another thing, I never went. I remember the first greasy pole. The greasy pole was off of Pavilion Beach, on the end of the Fort Playground. And and I remember it, seeing them one of the. One of the greasy pole contestants went on it, and he slipped or something like that, and he hit his chin on the way down, and knocked him out. He come up, and his face was down, and everybody jumped in to grab him because he was unconscious. And from that day on, I, I would never think of crossing, of going on the greasy pole. I did go on it after a month because it was there all the time. It was all dried up grease, and I would go on it, but I would never go on it when it had the grease on it. Yeah, no, that's, that's scary stuff. What else? Oh, I can't think so. So, last question. I have one more question. So, around town, everyone knows you as Joe Him. Yeah. How'd you get that name? Do you know how you got that name? Yeah. Because I've yeah. heard about five different stories as to how. Well, well, the real name is, when I used to go down the wharf, down Carl Taz Wharf, across from the, uh, down the producers were there. And Carta, I meant to say my cousin's name. He says, with Joe. He said, he asked me, what's my name? I said, Joe. I said, him. Instead of say for Faza. I said, him. That's how I, my name. That's how you got Joe uh, him. Uh, there was something else I was going to think about. Well, that's all right. I think we're good. 